All right, everybody, we're going to do a little bit of free forming on this one. I'm not really sure the uh, direction that this is going to take, but what I want to show you guys with this tutorial is how to do some common things. Like when you want to be testing to see, okay, let me see if this little thing that I'm trying to do can work. Um, and you want to know, okay, did I screw something up or is this really working the way I think it does? And you, and you, and you don't know how to test those things. I'm going to give you a couple of good tricks as to sort of navigating around the tool, the code, things like that. Okay. So the first good thing that you can do is, um, you can set up input scripts to test things and let's let's create some various scripts now i'm going to use my um uh, notepad plus plus i'm just going to go to new and i'm just going to comment out when you write these you're commenting out and you'll notice if i save this file save as <coughs> excuse me um i'm going to put it in my let's see no scroll module scripts I'm going to make a new folder called delete me. So that way I remember to delete this before I share this with you and confuse you. So I'm just going to call this whatever, and I'm going to give, make it an ASM file and I'm going to save it. You'll notice these turn green. What that means is I can write anything here and it won't compile it just ignores this stuff so let's make a script real quick that just just resets the game and to do that I can just hit JMP reset and I'm gonna hit control s to save that and now I'm gonna go to my input editor or I'm sorry my scripts input scripts I'm gonna navigate to that spot and I'm gonna bring in whatever and I could look at it make sure I brought in the right one it's just going to reset. Now I can go to my input editor. And this is, uh, you know, this is where it's going to start to get a little bit interesting when you can start to, to make things happen. I'm going to delete out um, these scripts right here. Right click, remove. So all I'm going to be doing is moving and stopping moving. Um, but what I can do is now when I press the B button, I'm going to run that whatever script. And that's going to make the game reset. So I'm going to test that. And now what I might be testing here is, okay, does something actually happen when I press the B button? Is the B button working? I'm moving around. I press the B button. Bam. It runs that script. It resets the game. Awesome. Okay. So let's say I want to do some other things. So I'm going to comment that out. This is as if I didn't even write that code. Let's make a script where I create something on the screen so what i can do for this and at the end of this i'm also gonna i'm sorry i should have done this i'm gonna make sure i put rts for any input scripts uh this is return from subroutine so all these are going to act like subroutines if you don't know what i'm talking about that's okay uh just know that when we jump out to this piece of code we want to make sure that we jump back into the code wherever we jumped from and that's what rts will do so at the end we're going to put rts and now let's create something on the screen by putting create object now create object is a macro and let's just pretend that i forget what this macro does um there's a few ways that i can check it uh i'm gonna save this i can go to define scripts and i can look at the macro here i can move this over and i want to look at create object and here if i scroll this up you can see what does it need the x value the y value what object what action step it should start creating at, um, and what uh, screen uh, it should show up on. So now if I go back, I can look at that, I can write that down, I, there could be a little scratch I keep to myself. Um, but what I'm really trying to do is go to my input scripts, and I want to create an object. Let's give it an arbitrary X and Y. 80, 80 would be the middle of the screen. All right, that's it's basically 128 by 128, and the screen's 256 pixels wide. This is the hex value for 128. Um, now, what object do I want to create? Well, um, let's say I, these are 0 through 16, and your or 0 through 15, and your monsters start at 16. So, if I want to create uh, a player, I would just put 0, 0. It's the first object, and he's going to show up in the middle of the screen. What um, 
state do I want them to show up at? I want them to show up at uh, zero zero action state, and I'm just gonna put current name table for which name table is gonna show up in. So let me test that real quick. And now when I press the B button, it's gonna run whatever script. Um, this should, okay, is my game creating something? There, there's my character right there, right? So um, if I reset that again, I'll press the B button, boom, creates a version of my character there. So now, I mean, I could change the X and Y value. You know what, let me see what happens. What happens if I take the Y value and I make it a smaller number? Test that. <coughs> Bam. Oops. Got to save it. And then test it. Sorry. There. Now it creates them higher, right? Okay. What if I wanted to, to leave behind a landmine or I'm creating a projectile? I need to get the player's position. So I'm going to load X with the player one object. Now X with not this type of X but my X register is loaded with whatever object my player is. She's usually zero, but not always. Um, and I'm gonna load uh, object X high comma X, what, the X register. What is my player's X value? I'm gonna store it into temp. And I'm gonna load object Y high X. And I'm gonna load it, store it into temp one. So now I'm I'm loading my character's x value into a variable called temp. I'm loading my character's y value into temp one. And now instead of putting a number here, I'll put temp for the x value and temp one. And these are just these are default variables that your game 99% of the sure, unless you really got in and messed with your variables, is gonna have. So I'm gonna save that. And now I should create a character. Uh, basically wherever my player is. I should create a new player when I press the B button. So I walk, I press the B button, and there he was. He was left behind. There we go. So you can see I'm leaving a trail. And now I can test, okay, how many objects can I get on the screen before I get slowed down? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and my player. So I can get eight objects before they're slowed down. There, I just tested something uh, by doing a quick test of object creation here. Let's say I want to play a sound. Now, I don't have any sound effects or music loaded in, so what I'm gonna have to do is load in some sound for this to work. I'm gonna import a family tracker file. And I think in the tutorial assets, I'm pretty sure I've got tutorial music. And I think that there's some sound effects. Good. All right. So um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on sound effects. And I have a bunch here. I'm going to add a new sound effects. And I'm going to call this sound whatever. I'm going to call it SND whatever. And I'm going to want it to play the thud sound when I play sound whatever. Okay, so I just need to remember this and I can even copy it if I want it. Control C. Um, and now if I go back to my input script, I can play sound. Sound whatever. Um, let's see. I can't remember if I've got a use this as a constant or not. I think my macro takes care of that. So we're going to test. We're going to check it out. Um, let me see real quick. Uh, if I go into, again, define scripts, and I go to play sound. Let's see. Play sound. And I look at the script. Let's see. Load argument one. Yes, I do need to put... So let me go back to here and I just say play sound SND whatever. Um, so now it's going to play the whatever sound I set up for this. So it's going to play thud when I press the B button. It's also going to start playing music because I added a song. So it's going to play the maze intro sound. press the B button. And it's really easy to change what sound I play by just changing this to, okay, I play jump. So now 
SND whatever is going to play the jump sound effect. So it's really easy and you know, so now you know how to, um, you know, play a sound wherever you want. Now let's say I want to um, stop sound and if I look at my macros, um, I've got a stop sound macro. So I'm going to use that right here. I'm going to stop sound and that doesn't need any arguments, I don't believe. Um, so now, let me just test to make sure stop sound works. Uh, so now if I press the B button, the sound should stop. And it does. Um, so you can see, like, I'm just basically using the B button press right now as a testing ground to test out a lot of these macros and see what they do. Let's say I want to warp to a screen. Now, this one might be a little bit complicated. Let's see what the macro says for warp screen. By the way, not all these macros are going to work with each core. And we talked about cores. I haven't gone through each folder and, and taken out the ones that no longer work with that core. But this is a good testing ground. You can start to play around a little bit. And especially if you have, like, a practice project and a practice core um, that you can start messing around with. Um, let's go to, I think there's one called go to screen. Go to screen. Let's take a look at that. What does it need? It needs to know screen to warp to, which map, and which transition type. And I don't have my transition types loaded here, but I know that I'm going to use transition type 2. That's the most common that you're going to use, I believe. Um, but that's also going to assume that you've set up your warp in positions uh, and things like that. So uh, real quick, let's go here. And I need screen to warp to, map, and transition type. So uh, I want to know for sure that I'm actually getting to underworld map. So I'm going to make an underworld map 0, 0. And I'm going to put like, I don't know, a down arrow here so I can really tell that, that, that this is... Um, yeah, I'm going to tell that, that this is the screen I'm on. I'm going to go to screen info, um, warp in at 8080. I'll put them right in the middle of that room. Put them like right here. Okay, so I want to, when I press my, I'm going to warp. Let's see, was that macro capitalized or not? Probably, right? Um, Go to it's go to screen, not warp to screen. Sorry, uh, go to screen. Go to screen, and what screen? Zero zero, and what map? Uh, zero one, which is the underworld, and zero two was the scroll type. So let's see if that macro is working, and if that takes me to the right place. It didn't. So now I know that there's some things that are messed up. Now let's, it might have taken me to the wrong map. Let me try putting two in the map. And it might be a case where zero uh, is, it represents a special screen, and one represents the main map, and two represents the underworld map. Aha! So now I've teched the problem. Now it put me in the wrong place. Um, I can't remember which is the right. Uh, uh, transition type. I thought it was two, but I could be mistaken. There we go. So now, actually, that didn't move me at all. That kept me in the same spot. Pretty sure it's two. I'd have to tech what's going on with the transition type, but you saw how I could easily test going to a screen, um, and I, I couldn't remember what that what the it wanted for the map. And now I now I remember like zero zero is for a special screen, zero one is for map one, zero two is for for the underworld map or map two. Um, so okay, so that's some cool stuff. Uh, also, uh, you could. See, you could um, maybe hide sprites. So I press the B button, and the sprites will go away. You know, I'm just trying some of these, um, some of the macros that I know work, and now the sprites go away. I don't know why you'd use some of these things, but you can sort of see 
how I can you, you know start testing these macros uh, in order to 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 see what they do, um, and and start playing around with them in a really easy way, uh, and then you know you, then you can get into sort of trickier stuff like we were showing in earlier script tutorials where I can get into scripts and I can start a being them. So uh, let's say I wanted to make a different um, let's see what am I looking for? Okay, I wanted a different thing to happen when I get to the left bounds. I'm gonna edit this one. Um, sure. Okay. I'm going to look at my left bounds update. This is what happens when I get to the left bounds. All right. I'm going to duplicate this. So I'm going to save as, and I'm going to call this one. In fact, I don't want to put it here. I'm going to put it in that delete me scripts right here. Do left bounds update alternate. Um, and I don't want to do any of this stuff. When I get to the left bounds, I want to reset the game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to module scripts, delete me, and I'm going to use the alternate left uh, bounds check. And so now what should happen is I should reset when I get to the left of the screen. So this is a nice way that I can test. Is are we ever seeing the left screen hit? So if I go to the right screen, business as usual. If I go to the left screen, and it did exactly what I thought it would do. Awesome. Um, so now I don't like that. Now I can A, B my scripts. So I can get in here and I could say, okay, I, I didn't like my version of what happens when I get to the left of the screen. Let me go back to the way that I knew was working. Um, instead of do left bounds update alternate, I'll just go into module scripts. Um, and where was that? It was inside main scripts and bounds handlers. I'm just looking at these other ones. Uh, module scripts, main scripts, bounds handlers, do top. I'm going to do left. That's probably where it is. If I edit, I can see, yep, that's what it was. And so now I could jump back and forth between those two scripts, the one I made and I tested and I changed some things on, or the one that you know I know is working. I don't break the entire game just to test some things. Uh, and that's what I'll, a lot of you guys who are starting to dabble into the assembly language, that's what I suggest doing. Make duplicates of these scripts. Organize them in a logical way into your own folder structure. Um, and then you'll be able to A, B them very quickly and easily. And now, back like it was before. So there's some tips and tricks for you, I guess, on how to start, you know, testing and teching some scripts and in and, and subtle ways. Um, and then, you know, when you're done, obviously this isn't what you want your B button to do. So you would go into your input editor and you get rid of that and you probably get rid of this script here. Um, and then... And then, you know, you put whatever you want to have happen when you press the B button. So hopefully that gives you some ideas of, of some things that you can do to start testing your own codes and stuff like that. And and I really would love for you to see you guys start sharing the things that you make happen, how you made them happen. Even if you don't fully understand how you made it happen, let other people look at your work and, and explain it to you so that other people can benefit from that. And we can keep making this cooler and cooler.